Don't let the drive shaft come out. Alright, in today's video I am going to be putting a wheel spring, main spring, that one there in that box into my Honda Civic 2.2 CDTI. That's a 2007, so it's 2006 to about 2011 the model there. All right, okay, so let's have a look. I bought this for only 45 pounds at GSF, and that's a company that supplies auto parts. And that's the, that's the cheapest I can get it. And actually, it says there when I bought it, I was nicely surprised. Made in Sweden. And it says here, I can't read that. Leso Fours, Leso Les, yeah, Lesia Fours. So, so this is the complete spring supplier. And they, looks like they they specialise in that. All right, okay. I've got also my Andy Honda Civic uh, book, Haynes Manual, just in case. Just in case, Haynes Manual. I've done this several times, so it should be okay. Now, the tools you need, let me get some of them out. I won't, I won't be able to tell you everything I need, because I'll uh, grab them as I use them. So here's the new spring. And uh, spring compressors. Wind-on ones, they're really good. Got long ones there, and normal sized ones. Usually, You'll need definitely the short ones to compress the spring, the old spring, to be able to take it off. And um, you need another set to compress this to put it back on. Well, you could, com if the spring was short, you could compress it, take it off, release the spring, release the clamps, and then compress the new spring. But looking at this, don't know. It's not very, lo not a very long spring, I would say. The springs go. I've seen them from here to about here it's much longer that's why I needed the uh, longer version so we'll see we'll see and I'll show you next what it looks like because uh, on my vehicle testing inspection I didn't even notice it but the inspector noticed that it was broke and you can hardly tell because it broke down, down here uh, so he, he found it I didn't find it and, and looking at it I couldn't really even tell it was broken but if you have a closer look you'll see it kind of comes down at a, an acute angle when the wheel when the wheel is um, hanging down when the wheel's hanging down when it's when the wheels compressed as you definitely can't tell the difference well, I've got my safety triangle out I'm on nice level ground today I've got my axle stand although I may end up using a different one we'll see and uh, Undo the road wheel nuts for the wheel still on there, loosen them a little bit and then jack it up, take the wheel off and then put it on a nice sturdy axle stand. So I'm going to lift up the left side only. it's kind of creaking so this proves you can't really trust these things it's just slowly kind of probably losing pressure somewhere there might be a seal's broken in there I had this a few years been okay but I'll show you where my jacking point usually is just I'm using a, a tri stand and I'll put one on the rear as well and then I'm gonna put another one just here as a backup so piece of wood right there there's like a hole oh, I should have done that. Okay. there's a hole right there just there oops just there so between before you get to this plastic shroud because if it sits on that you're gonna break the plastic shroud 
I usually leave it just here. And I reckon when you're doing a job, this is probably a crucial part of it when you're setting up, making sure everything's fine. I mean, I had that wood as you turn, so you turn that, the uh, cross section towards me. And I thought to myself, if I lower the car, it's going to squeeze that wood outwards and it's not going to sit quite right. So all those things you should be going through your mind. Um, so if I lay it horizontal, that short piece of wood should even make the thing kind of the whole thing topple or it should sit snuggling which it has done all right so it makes you all three feet or four feet on there and is this is very very crucial this bit because you can't really risk it that one there it's not really even on but it's just like a backup that would do but i will put it back up just here right with the wheel hanging i'll show you a look there's one coil, look how the other coil so closely put next to it. It's just snapped off and it's just sitting on, sitting on like the next coil where that bit snapped off. All right, so, now springs and the suspension should be changed in pairs. Definitely if it was like a rotor, definitely change that in pairs. So change the left rotor and the right rotor, even though the left could be one out and the right not. But fix the problem and then change it because it could be some sort of in, in balance in caliper pressure or something like that. But I've been advised you can, you can probably, because it's such an old car, just, just change one, just change one spring. Just do the one you need to do. And that's what I'm going to do. So road wheel off next. Have a magnetic tray for everything. You know, a few magnetic trays. So here's the McPherson strut, of course. And if you follow it all the way up, it sits in a it sits in a bucket at the top, doesn't it? And unfortunately, it's hidden. Take off this rubber. A few plastic clips. I just had cable ties in there, and this just pops right off. It should be attached over there on the left. Right, there's a the retainer just here, and this whole quarter panel should come off. This quarter corner panel, I should say, should come off. Like multiple threads in it, you know, looks like that. So that's off. Uh, there's another one there. I could take that off to remove this. I don't think I need to. It's going to be it's going to be inserted with some clips. I can feel one just here. So I'm going to push from underneath. Pushing both fingers. Uh, looks like the windscreen wipers gonna have to be removed. Let me see if it could slide right over it. Come on, watch it. That one and that one I have to remove, and that one and that little one there. Let's take this one off so the, the rim, the edge can come off. Just more access to this one. There's one of them clips there, much deeper inside. I don't know if you can see. There's another one deep, deep inside. So maybe try use one of these. Time to remove the windscreen wiper. I use the trim removing tool underneath the plastic one. Push on it, heard it click. But now to get the rest of it, this has got to be taking off 17 so you get the little plastic end off first 17 usually these are not on very tight don't put them on too tight turn the turn the nut sometimes you have to close the bonnet really close the hood of the car. 
and we'll go to the next year. So we're on tiny little I don't know what you call them little kind of knurls in there and they sit on there and grip. So it should slide that way. It's easier when you look at it. You actually look at it and see what you need to take apart. So so it was sitting like that. That's that clip there is the reason why it's got to go that way. Uh, check the state of these two. They're okay. They didn't crack. I've got like a big bag of them. I can't remember what I bought them for. Ten pounds. A whole bag of plastic clips of all sorts of description for any kind of car. Random clips. These come off. They snap off. Just replace them. This thing it should, it should be above a bung. Here we go. All right. Now we've got access. Not too bad. Getting to this stage. So we've got three, three nuts there. I'm going to uh, penetrate oil. I was going to say WD-40. I haven't got any. Penetrate all of this. Don't touch this at the moment. And the whole thing should drop down once we disconnect all the suspension. So keep this. I'm just going to clean this down a little bit. Right, so let's just have a quick look at this. I've not taken this one apart before. They're all kind of similar. They've got the caliper clamp, caliper, uh, brake pads, rotor. These rotors have screws. I've never taken these off, so they might end up being jammed, most likely. There's a shield. And my ball joints underneath, my steering rack joint is here ball joint is here and here somewhere so the thing is I need more visual no no looks like there's two bolts here and here that clamp onto the strut um, obviously the hub bolt is here If this came off, it would be much easier to see what I'm doing. That's all I'm saying. But it can be a bit of a problem because these things here, you know, I might have to end up drilling it out. So I don't want to come quietly. You know, sometimes you can just, on some cars, if you're lucky, undo that, undo that, and the thing just falls out. Um, there's also this, looks like some sort of stabiliser bar. Just here, which is attached to yeah, stabiliser bar here and have a take a picture of how these cables go I'm going to do that right now look how they go before you take anything apart as you imagine you put this on and this is behind here that would be a problem so try 13 nope try 12 12 I'm trying to sock it it's a bit rusty clean it down these should be not on too tight 15 new meters something like that, not too tight 20 check your e-manual or manual the bottom one So, I was right the first time round. 13. There we go. Oops, as I just did that, you can see that turning. So, that was no good. Don't want to be turning the, the rubber. Let's turn it back the other way. Take the strain off it. Need, a, need just to grab that with a pair of pliers. Or. Let's see what fits in there. Size 17. 
Nope. Be weary and watchful, things like that. Just grabbed it. And it's just the, the bolt, not the, not the rubber shroud. <laughs> Get hand right, so repeat at the bottom. That's that's okay, but it's quite smooth, it's not stuck or anything. Her caliper should just come off. You need a well, I need to suspend it somewhere. Suspend it on usually, I'll suspend it on this, but we can't now. Spend it on the spring, but I can't because we're taking it off. So, let me think of something and I'll let you know. Alright, that's kind of hanging. Put it back in. There's a 12 here. I think I'm going to take this off all the way and maybe hang the caliper back here. I don't know if this will help taking this off. We'll find out. That's, of course, stuck. Extension bar comes off. And it's kind of feeling loose, so it's a good idea doing that. All right, so it's all loose, and if it fell down, and just hit that, it'd be fine. Hit the floor. I think it's low enough. Screw the screw bolts back in. So we don't lose them. Take the brake pads out. And so it's got them brake pad kind of guides there. Yeah, careful when you do that. Just observe what you're doing. As I pulled that away, there's a brake pad shield. And it came off, and this one's got a shield as well. Check which way the squealer is. It's going to be on the rear one. Okay. Rear bottom squealer. And the metal shield that comes on. Bend that back into place. Clip that back on. Next job. Caliper itself. Caliper bracket, calipers down there, I mean, caliper bracket, and uh, two big bolts. You could leave these, I think they're quite unsolid. Give them a little clean up once it comes off. I reckon maybe an 18. Let me just check it. A bit wobbly. Seventeen. So it's a seventeen. Those two. Time to uh, penetrate oil that up. Right. Well, don't know about you. But I'm always happier to get this lump out of the way and this row out of the way. You see so much more. But however, I can see the ball joint. Probably don't need to remove that. I can remove this if I wanted to. I have done it in the past where I've removed the uh, calibre bracket just to get this strut. Don't really have to. There's a speed sensor here. It's connected here where my finger is. See that plastic push? That got, that's got to come out. Cable tied here. That's got to come out. Sometimes it's sensible to take it out from the uh, from where it's embedded into the the hub so you don't damage it. But if I take this out, this, this out, and uh, just move out of the way, 
Uh, obviously the two big bolts here. The nuts here, the bolt goes that way. It might even flop forward. Of course I need an allen key here and a ring spanner and an allen key over top to, to take that apart. And then that should swing over that way. So if I take these two bolts out, take this, take this, I might be able just to just to maneuver this out of the way and it might even just be ready to you know fall off if I take the three nuts from up there. I don't think there's anything else to touch. So let me let me do that and I'll give you the uh, diameters of these bolts and allen keys in a minute after I've done it, after I've loosened it. So, 17, and uh, for the initial crank, I won't be able to insert the allen key, which is a try number six. Not sure, probably not. No, number six. Try five. So ring spanner after I crank it open. Yeah. Number five in there. Let's see if I can make an initial kind of turn. Okay, there's my initial turn. Three eighths. Sometimes you know you don't need it. I mean, I've loosened it. Right, 17 ring spanner. So now, see, you stop the whole bolt from turning, you just get the right turning. Running key there. So I'll carry on doing that. So, with a wiggle, maybe should come off. Let me get a uh, pry bar, pry it from behind. Pry that off. Maybe a bit of a lift. If I just pump them underneath, if I lifted this, it would straighten it. But let's let's try prying it off and then it should just slip out. There is a lot of tension on this bar. Reason being is probably because the other wheel is touching the floor. So I'm gonna take away that stand, the blue one, take away the rear one and jack up both wheels now and put it on the stand. So no problem really, not difficult and that the tension you should see so I'll put that bolt back on to see if I can pry it through it kind of went through a little bit it went through a little bit but still if I took it off I'll never get it back on that's the thing there's no way I'll be able to push it up and push that in so let's get both wheels up now with both wheels off the floor and supported You'll notice way loose now, so much easier. Double check that the support down here hasn't moved. Nope, that's okay. Take that bar off. All right, 19, 19 both ends. I've got a 60 millimeter, 600 millimeter bar here. Always undo the bolt with the nut. Okay. Shift it a little bit. Ugh. I think okay, the whole thing's rotating, which is good. Broke the, uh, the rust in there, maybe. Okay. Spin 
in the bottom bolt. This one is a problem. This one is a problem. Okay. Too much force and that's gonna snap. So let me just uh, penetrate oil with that a bit more. It may have to be a uh, impact driver job. Right, this is the Clark's 450 newton meter plug-in kind of impact wrench, not the battery one. The battery ones aren't that powerful, but I've never really had a good one, so I don't know. Much tightening when it loosens. So top one, double check. All right, it's a 19. Move a little bit, breaking up the rust. All right, so, make sure you get one of these, only about £63, £59, something like that, from machine parts. So, let's do the top one as well from Machine Mart UK. It's through rust. You need a blowtorch or something like that, otherwise. Uh, obviously, I've turned the wheel to the left, steering wheel to the left. All right. So, I'm going to be cleaning these bolts up. You're meant to be re uh, using new ones afterwards. I'll give you the torque once I find it out myself. Clean up some of these threads. Half the resistance is trying to get. Uh, it doesn't even screw in very well. So I'm going to clean them up. Why brush it? It's really too risky to put a um, tap and die thing on it. Clean it up, oil it up, and you seize it up. Not too bad. Let's get that bottom one. Feel a lot of wobbliness in the thing now. The thing is, without all that rust and resistance, you might find it. Very easy to tighten up. Get that bolt. And the easiest way to clean threads is WD-40 and ECs. Put the original bolt back on. You need a tap and die. Run it through. Need a oh, you need a longer 19. Run it all the way through back the other way a few times and that's it. It's the easiest way of cleaning your bolts. Use the original nut, you won't go wrong. If you use tap and die, it can work. It, it can be risky as well. So I'm gonna give it at least amount of resistance when I tighten up so the, the maximum amount of proper force is uh, torqued onto the bolt and nut. So finally, now I can turn this, my hands only. See that? In, out, in, out. That's how it should be. That's what it would be like if it was new. Okay, I'm happy with that. Do the other bolt. Right, so that is loose. Nothing else on it. Don't let the drive shaft become, become disconnected from inside the, the, the gearbox. So be careful about that. So, all right, that's perfectly loose. So let's do the undo the top three. So, it was a good idea to take off the brake caliper 
brake pads because when I turn the steering wheel to the left it's going to be much better access to these two bolts to um, impact drive them off if I hadn't have done that they would have been in the way and I had to take them off so because they're so easy to take off just take them off this is going to be much harder so that's why I was I mean I mean, didn't don't think I need to do it but we'll see we'll see we'll see it's kind of loose just these three fellas at the top don't know what they are 15 maybe I'll check okay 14s Too tight at all. Okay, don't give me a problem. Maybe. Just about fit. Set up. It's been sitting in a penetrating hole for a while. So just that little thing there. Was it in the way slightly? You know. Was it exactly vertical? That kind of thing. Because I've got a slight small extension bar. Maybe. Came off. So these three come off and the strut is just going to fall. So be careful. Make sure you've got proper footwear on. You might fall onto your foot, cut your shins off. take off first right so as soon as I took off the last nut kind of collapsed in on itself all right all right so very floaty I'm gonna move this backwards and get the strut out don't let the drive shaft come out out um, what can I do to support this because I mean a drive shaft is just push in pushed in with a little ring to to stop it from falling through falling out. The bracket here and you just wedge something underneath the cable tie. Cable tie, cable tie, cable tie under here. I did have a long cable tie earlier. The slightest movement can be a problem, right? So, which I need to get a cable tie, tie up. Anyway, I'm just going to leave that wedged under there. Cable tied here behind the bracket, not on the pipes. And to keep it kind of straight. If the drive shaft fell out, would I know it? That's the thing. I've taken drive shafts out before. Uh, but everything because everything's pushed in, who knows? It can fall out if you start whip. You have to normally start yanking, yanking, and pry bar it. But, oh, yeah, it doesn't fall out as easy as that. Let's hope it hasn't done that. Let's hope it hasn't done that. Right, okay. So I'll let you have a proper look inside. So I'm at this stage, that's all been sorted, that's all hung up. So we've got this to deal with now. Okay. So there's definite hole to hole. So there's no guessing on that. That's good. Obviously we just need to change that. There is the broken bit of the spring. There it is. See it? It's got rust on it so it's been broken a while. I didn't even know it. Okay. Obviously, a very important part is knowing which way up the spring should be. Now, 
Look how it sits inside a plastic shroud just here. Just here. Uh, can't really line the broken end. So can we match? <coughs> can we match it? I would say it's. Is it this end? It kind of gets fatter and then it's narrow at the top. I would say wider at the bottom. Do you agree? It's fatter here, but the top is narrower, narrower than the bottom. Top looks narrower here. This looks like the bottom. So the narrow bit is the top bit. Yep. So I'm going to get some white paint at Tipex. Just going to put some on there to indicate the top. So. I've got it laying on its side, the two holes facing to the right. There's the end of the spring where my bottom of my finger is. I've got that white mark pointing up. End of the spring, white mark pointing up. So it makes great sense. I would recommend putting the I thought I'm gonna try the short one. On the um Underneath, I think. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna swap it around and put the screw bit on top. Right now, there's a bit of a uh, bit of a tricky game now. I've just put them on hand tight. That's uh, 20, 21. Okay, 21. I've got two on there. The trick is this, the difficulty is this I should say, that nut there, if I was to get an impact driver and buzz it, it would just come straight off, but so will me going straight to hospital, because that spring's going to go bang, straight out, I'll never be able to, I'll never be able to have enough of a chance to, to kind of stop the thing spinning, that's why you've got spring compressors, to take the tension. But if I if I tension it too much, there won't be enough tension to undo this. So best to do it by hand. Uh, let's give it a bit of tension both sides. Where's that 19 gone? Where is that 21? Anyway, it's right. Bit of tension both sides. So I'm taking the. I'm compressing the spring somewhat. Do it evenly. Before I forget, make sure you count how many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I count nine and a half. I should count it again. Obviously, I'm going to wind this one down as well. Now, I don't think. Good idea to use this long one and not use a short one with a wobble bar. Change over. So I'm starting to compress the spring. And it's really hard to take apart. There you go, just about. Okay, there's a little bit of tension on there. But let's uh, count the number of uh, threads one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven really ten full ones and a dodgy eleven at the top all right let's move on. all right so and uh, is it 17? A uh, deep socket. I uh, need a deep socket to test it. I think it's deep socket, so. Right, let's see how it goes. Oh, 
Oh no, it's not 17. It's bigger than that. Okay, so ring spanner 18, like that. Six mil Allen key, like that. Oops, let me show you. And I might not be able to do this without a vice, maybe. Hope you can see that. Let's turn it. It's really hard. Let me try my knee. Holding it. Uh, let's have a look. If I turn it that way, it's going to hit the floor. It tries to rotate, of course it does. You see the difficult of this. Okay. So everything, all three things are trying to rotate at the same time. It makes me think if they, these three were in the actual backup and the actual uh, body of the car and locked down. It's one thing the least less is going to rotate. So this is a it's going to be a difficult year. So it would be really wise put that back in. Let me get it back in the top, see if I can do it like that. Because I mean if I was to hold this down, as I try and rotate that the shaft turns, this is meant to stop that, but there's no way I can do it. There's no way I can do it, there's no way I can produce enough torque on this little Allen key to hold it, stop it from turning. So, right with these loosely back on, the bolt through there, and still propped up. Let's try the 18 ring spanner again, see if we can break that, break that bolt, break that nut open. If I put that six mil there, it might twang off, that's the thing. Try something. Try a one meter extension bar. Come over this side. No, it is not. Wanting to turn at all. Right. So, try to be nice. It can be clamped down the spring and use a impact wrench. Right, so this bit, of course, is dangerous. I haven't really compressed the spring that much, although the spring has already been compressed. Otherwise, it would never have fitted in there. You can tell from the uh, the new spring how much it has been compressed. Probably about that much. 
Um, so that's how much spring power you can expect to have in there. So I'm even going to wear a a, um, a gas mask, uh, air filtration mask, protect my face. Running uh, special better goggles, give me a bit of protection. I don't know. As soon as that thing turns a little bit, I'm going to stop whizzing it. I'm not going to definitely not spin that off, so be very careful. You want that coming off, so press the top button on the clock. But no, I think the whole lot spun there. So, let me just count the uh, number thread. Now I count only 10, 10 threads. It was 11, wasn't it? So, has it, has it undone itself? Has it done and done itself? Don't know. Let's try it again. Oh, 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 Yes, yes, yes. You see that, folks? Get one of them clocks, 450 newton meter. See that? Sorted. Well done. You really need one of these to do this job. I mean, I tried. See how that did not spin and that did spin. I don't know what it is about it. Now, air gun if you've got one, of course, but if you haven't got one. Um, to hit that like button now, if you're not already done so, come on. This is a difficult bit out of the way. I had to have all this protection. You just don't know. You just don't know. You don't know how that's going to happen. What's going to happen? So ten there is tension on here, I have wound it down, but not too much. If you, if you squeeze that all the way, you won't be able to get it off because there's no tension on the bolt. You won't be able to get the nut off on me because there's nothing pressing on it. So that would not have worked. So don't compress it away, just compress it a little bit to take the force away. I notice I've got three. Three short clamps. Oh. Now we need to be mindful of how it all fits because there'll be all sorts of um, sleeves in there. So, pull this away, line them up, line them up on something, line them up. First part first, this comes off. I know it's this one, it's the silver nut. I'll leave that silver nut in there. Come this off. Like a sug. Okay, there's a little catch there. on like that and then you rotate it so to take it off you kind of rotate it, this inner thing looking at it here and you pull check the bearing if you observe your bearing I showed you that I think I'll feel it was off the camera actually right so I take it off this went in there and I rotated it any clockwise and it kind of just fell off like that. There it is. Alright, so it goes in like that. 
and some sort of sleeve fit it into the sleeve like that in a minute when I put the new spring on and compress it and then rotate the thing clockwise to lock it that's it really. here we go look see it go on like that like that we take this inner piece not the bearing around the spring like that okay all right Design. It's pretty short as well. Didn't need a lot of compressing. Wasn't too dangerous. Listen to that. If you was to turn your steering, you kept hearing squeaking noises. It would be that. That's a sealed unit. Wouldn't harm it if I squeeze some oil in there. No, like three in one oil. Anyway, so the opposite is true. What I need to do is release them clamps now slowly compress the new clamp for the new spring and do the reverse so that's it job done thanks for watching and uh, if you're not already a subscriber consider subscribing leave a comment below do you do jobs like this are you confident to do a job like this not too difficult not dangerous at all on the Honda Civic it is dangerous if you're not careful you didn't have these clamps in. I would recommend three spring clamps, not two. That's got nowhere to go. You couldn't suddenly go shoink, one way and then the other one fly off. Anyway, thanks for watching. Right, so new spring. Make sure that the top has been slid against that little notch there and the bottom likewise. And that little bot one there. Obviously the spring is a lot longer. May have made a mistake. I should have compressed instead of three rungs of spring four. Maybe I should have used the longer spring compressor. But as you can see I've compressed these all the way down and I picked the middle three to do. Alright, so now I just need to tighten the top up. Once you have that on the top it's kind of much safer. By the way, this separates into the bearing, which is the bottom half, and then the mount which is the top half. All right, so let's carry on. Right, I just kind of tightened this up and uh, just sort of felt a dead stop. That's why I stopped it. And I counted it, 10 and a half, nearly 11. So that's that. Now your next thing is, I'm doing this because sometimes you know, you've got, there's a little trick in there as well. Uh, you have to be careful. If I was to unwind these all the way down, it may mean that, uh, say I didn't have these clamps on it, it may mean that when I go to install the unit back up, uh, it may be too long, right? It may well be just a bit too long uh, for it to uh, to fit, and I'll have to kind of jiggle, and then the drive shaft might pop out. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unwind it until these are down here and out of the way. And I'm going to keep a bit of tension on it, just to see, just to see, can I do it like that? Fit the whole unit back up there, fit the two bolts back onto here, and then unwind these. So, so let's 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 do that. So now I need to unwind these until these disappear down here somewhere. These three. All right. All right. Trying to scratch that plan. It's not going to work. Uh, after I wound in all 11 there, showing 11 threads there, just evenly going around, a few turns each side, just watch the next one, a few turns each side. Um, wind it all the way down, it's completely loose. Double check the two points are in the correct place at the top and the bottom, meeting the notch because uh, they stick out. There's no way I can put that in there. Uh, put that to the top of the, the car's um, housing. It's sticking out like that. So, anyway. 
That is it. Putting on mound. All the springs tension is taken by the uh, strut as it should be. Alright, so I'll just give you one last scene just to just to see if it's easy to push in with it kind of fully extended out. The whole full length of the spring. And that's it. Okay, well, the spring was fully extended. I pushed it up. Make sure you line up the the two. Is it remember those triangular bolts? Two horizontal this way. You line them up. Push them up. And uh, see the horizontal here and here, thereabouts. I just tweak it. Push them up. Screw them up. Hand tight. There's old marks there where it was sitting. I should end up being tightened right on that same mark. I don't want any differences in tracking. And then, well, obviously, make sure that's seated in there. And look, it's not an issue at all. So, really, job's done. Remember where all these cables go, which way around they go. That's it. So, thanks for carrying on watching, even after you've seen me taking apart. Thank you. Bye. Watch. Oh, one last thing nearly forgot, newton meters uh, for the torque wrench setting. They say this is, should be 59, um, I don't think so, I think probably more like 25, 30 newton meters would do. They say that's also 50 something, I don't think so, it's way too high I think. Um, I'm going to give it 30, 30, 30 and that just sort of stops, you can't mind that anymore. Um, on the length, uh, 10 and a half, they say this is 29 sounds about right and they say this is 106 and uh, that's it really so I'm gonna go with probably 30 there mm, probably nowhere near 106 uh, maybe like 80 maybe something like that. and stick with about 30 30 you can't really do that one it went to the limit like I said anyway that was it thanks And well, it kind of clicked on 80 very, very easily, so 106 makes a lot more sense. Not really even put that much force on. So I just move my arm down really on 80. So 106. when you use these you unwind them there's 106 there's 100 106 is there wind it down Lock it down and uh, when you finish using it unwind it and store it away properly so this should be a lot old nuts and bolts there we go Sense. So it's a reused bolt, reused nut, it didn't break it. It wasn't even that, that much force. There we go, that was it. Not that much force. Anyway, that's it.